This is a Google Pixel 6. This is Graphene OS, and today we'll be installing Graphene OS on the Google Pixel 6. If you don't know what Graphene OS is, I have some videos I'll link above that actually go in depth and review the OS, but today we're just gonna be talking about how to install it. So the first step in this process is to head on over to grapheneos.org. We're gonna be using the official install guide on the website. The developers put a lot of time and effort into this. This video is just merely a step-by-step -step guide to follow along in case you have any questions or confusion about the steps listed on the site. So once you get to grapheneos.org, go ahead and click on install Graphene OS. Quick note, I will leave a link down below that'll contain all the commands and links referenced in this video. So you can reference that if you wanna copy and paste instead of typing everything out. On this page, you have two options. There's a web USB based installer or command line installer. We're gonna be using the web USB based one. So the first part here is the prerequisites and the table of contents. Give this a read over. I'm not going to read it to you on this video. Make sure I'm one of the supported operating systems. Down here, pay particular attention to this part. Firefox is not supported, so you will need to get a Chrome-based browser. If you're looking to use something a little more private than Google Chrome, go ahead and download Chromium. One caveat to this, if you're on Ubuntu, the Chromium package will not work. I confirmed this because I didn't read the instructions and I was using Chromium and it did not work. So if you're on Ubuntu, more than likely you'll have to install Google Chrome and use that. Just some other notes here, do not use incognito mode. Okay, give this a read over. And the first step is to enable OEM unlocking on your device. So here on the screen recording, we have a Google Pixel 6. This is just the default OS install right out of the box. So this should be exactly what you see on your phone. So we're gonna swipe up, scroll down to settings, click on settings, scroll all the way down to the bottom to about phone. Select about phone, scroll down to the bottom. And now to enable developer options on Android OS, we need to tap build number. So keep tapping it. You'll see you are now three steps away too. I need to enter my pin to enable this. I'm gonna blur this out fast. And we can now see you are now a developer on the bottom. Once you have that, go ahead and click back. Select system. You should now see the developer options. Select that. Scroll down and you should now see something called OEM unlocking. Click on that. Again, enter your pin if you have one. This is a quick disclaimer about enabling this. We want to, so click enable. And now one thing you might notice is that you do not have this option on your phone. The first thing you can try is make sure you connect to Wi-Fi. There's anti-theft features where the phone needs to check in, make sure it's not marked as stolen. And once you connect to Wi-Fi, maybe try rebooting if you don't see it, and then you should be able to enable it. The other reason you might not be able to unlock the bootloader is you have a Verizon-based Pixel, and if you have that, you cannot unlock the bootloader, you can't enable OEM unlocking. Your best choice is to just sell the phone online somewhere, eBay, Craigslist, wherever you get rid of stuff you don't want, and purchase the phone you can unlock. The instructions on the site also mention this about the requirement for internet access. So again, like I said, connect to the internet if you can't enable it, and then we'll proceed on to the next step. So this next section, flashing as non-root, this is where the instructions will change a little bit depending on what OS you're installing this from. I'm on Mac OS, there's nothing additional I need to do. So if you're on Arch Linux or a Debian based OS, you will need to install some extra packages to get this to work as a non-root user. So I'll leave a link down below that'll have those command examples listed. Always make sure to double check commands, don't just trust a stranger on the internet. And once you complete that, we can go ahead and move on to the next step. So this next part is booting the phone into the bootloader interface. So in order to do this, I'm going to switch my camera to the phone screen because screen recording does not work when the phone is in this mode. So I will see you in a moment. And we're back. So the next step is to boot the phone into the bootloader interface. One thing to note, the phone is still not connected to our computer. So make sure you do not have the USB cable connected at this point. So to boot into the bootloader interface, the easiest way is to reboot the phone and then hold the volume down button while the phone boots up. So to reboot the phone, we're going to swipe down Pull down again, you should see the power button down there. Press that. Now once you select restart, go ahead and press the volume down button right after. So select restart, hold the volume down button. Takes a moment for the phone to boot back up. Once you see this, we have successfully booted into the bootloader interface. We can now see the next step in the instructions is to connect the phone. So for this, you will need a USB-C cable. You can use the one that came with your device or another one, preferably the one that came with it. I'm using a different one because it's longer. Go ahead and connect that. Just a couple other caveats if you're on something else besides macOS. 
On Linux, you might need to connect the phone a couple times to get you to see it, or you could just try and reboot. On Windows, you will need to install the driver for Fastboot. They have links and instructions down below. So once you complete all that, go ahead and select Unlock the Bootloader. You should see your phone here. If you don't see your phone here, or you have any other strange issues throughout this entire process, try changing the USB cable to a different one. I've had commenters in the past mention how the cable was faulty. Even though the computer sees it, there could just be some funky behavior with it. So if you are trying to troubleshoot why things aren't working, go ahead and try a different cable. Once you see your phone, select it, click connect. You should see the screen change like we did. And on this screen right now, you can see the current option says, do not unlock the bootloader. We need to press the volume up or down button. So it says unlock the bootloader and then press the power button to select that. And we can now see down here, device state unlocked. The bootloader has been successfully unlocked. The next step is to obtain factory images. This will go ahead and download the latest Graphene OS image. So go ahead and click download release. Depending on your internet connection speed, the amount of time this takes to download will vary. So once the download has completed, you will see that downloading has changed to downloaded. That means we're ready to go on to the next step. The next part is to actually flash Graphene OS to the phone. Just another warning, this will replace the existing OS and wipe all the existing data. Wait for the flash process to complete and it will automatically handle flashing the firmware, rebooting and everything else. So once you click this button, don't touch the phone until it's done. So go ahead and click flash release. And you'll see a current status down here and you will see the phone screen change as the install process is occurring. So once you see flashed, whatever the file was to device, the flashing step has completed. Now this next step is very important to the integrity and security of the device to enable full verified boot. In the first step, we unlocked the bootloader. Now we need to relock the bootloader. If you're curious as to the details of why this is so important, go ahead and give this a read. But for this, we can see a device state unlocked. Go ahead and click lock bootloader. Again, the option is do not lock the bootloader. Press the volume up or down to lock the bootloader and then press the power button to select that. We can now see device state is locked, so we have successfully relocked the bootloader. Now there's a couple more post-installation steps we need to make, so go ahead and start the phone. You can do that by just pressing the power button to select start. This warning is normal. There is a different OS on the phone, not the standard Google one, so you do see this warning every time you boot up your device. If you see this, you know your install was successful. Phone is booting up. So now the phone has booted up, we're going to walk through the initial setup and we're also going to verify some other options are disabled for the security of the device. Go ahead and click start. Select your language. Date and time, change that if you need to. I'm going to skip Wi-Fi for now. I don't have a SIM card in this phone. Location services, this just allows an app to request that. Fingerprint, you should set this up for security. I'm gonna go ahead and skip this for now. If you don't set up a fingerprint, it wants you to set up a pin. Again, I'm gonna skip this for this demonstration. This part in the setup allows you to restore a Graphene OS backup you might have from another device, like if you have a Pixel 5 and you're migrating to the Pixel 6. If you don't have a backup or this is just a new setup, go ahead and select skip and then select start. At this point, we can now see the default Graphene OS screen. You might notice it's a little more bare looking than the default Android install. It's a little intimidating at first, but it's beautiful. So the other settings we need to confirm, again, go into settings, scroll down, select about phone, scroll down, tap build number again to enable developer settings, select back, Select System, Developer Options, OEM Unlocking. We now need to disable this. We no longer need it. 
You need to restart the device to enable this, but we're not going to restart right now. And then lastly, we're going to disable developer options. If you need them, leave them enabled. Most people don't. I don't, so I'm going to disable them. So OEM unlocking is disabled. Developer options are disabled. At this point, you are good to go and have fun setting up Graphene OS.